In this video, we're going to discuss the free energy criteria for spontaneity. So we know from the second law of thermodynamics that a, a process is spontaneous if its change in entropy is greater than zero, right? We know that the change in entropy must be greater than zero from the second law, right? And in the previous video, we defined the Gibbs free energy as G is equal to H minus TS, right? So what I want to do in this video is use our, what we know from the second law about spontaneity and entropy, the relationship between those two, and the definition that we just gained for the Gibbs free energy to derive a spontaneity criteria for the Gibbs free energy, right? So since we know that the Gibbs free energy can be defined in terms that only refer to the system, It'll be very powerful if we can say if a process is spontaneous or not using the Gibbs free energy as our thermodynamic potential. So first, let's uh, address our usual uh, thermodynamic system. We have some system. It can be a chemical reaction um, that's in some large water bath and it's isolated. Right. So this is going to be a isolated system. So what do we know about isolated systems? We know that that means that Q for our system is equal to negative Q for the surroundings, right? We know that there's that interplay between the heat transfer, that whatever is gained by the system is lost by the surroundings and vice versa, right? So we know that this is going to be at constant temperature and pressure. So first, let's see what effect that has on our Gibbs free energy expression, right? So we know that Gibbs is going to be equal to uh, H minus TS, right? We want to be uh, dealing with some sort of change in Gibbs free energy, right? We want to be able to say if there's this specific change in energy, then we know the process is spontaneous or not. So we're going to need a differential here. So if we have dG, that's going to be equal to dH minus, and if we take the derivative of TS, right, that means we're going to end up with T dS minus S dT, right? Now, thinking about our actual thermodynamic situation here, right, we're dealing with a system that's at constant temperature and pressure. So what does that mean for this differential? Right? Well, that means that this last term is just going to go away, right? Uh, since it's dealing with a change in temperature and we have no change in temperature, that guy's done. So since that guy goes away, then our total change in Gibbs is going to be equal to delta H minus T delta S, right? And so the only challenge for us here is to see if we can express our delta H in terms of only properties of the system. And we've actually done this before, but I'm going to go through the nuts and bolts again, right? If, if we have some sort of, we know we have to evaluate the delta S of the universe, right? In order to, to get this criteria for spontaneity. So um, we know we need to evaluate the delta S for our system and our surroundings. Now the delta S for the surroundings is just going to be equal to the heat gained or lost in the surroundings divided by the temperature of the surroundings, this constant temperature that we're at. Now using that definition uh, or this relationship right between Q sys and Q sir, right? We just say that we have the negative of Q system over the temperature, right? And since we're at constant pressure, that means the constant pressure uh, heat transfer is just going to be equal to the enthalpy. So we have negative delta H of our system over T, right? So that's going to be our delta S for the surroundings. Right? Our delta S for the surroundings can be expressed in terms of the enthalpy of our system. So that means when we go to solve for delta S total, and I'll just use sub T for delta S total, so delta S sub T. Right? Our delta S of the surroundings is this guy, so negative delta H cis over T plus the delta S of the system. Right? So now what we've done here is we've expressed our total entropy change as only variables related to the system, right? So this is only related 
to the system. Okay, so it's only a function of the system properties only, right? Okay, so now when we uh, put in for delta s total, right? So we can uh, solve for delta s uh, total here, right? Just by, uh, or we can use our delta g equation um, in order to plug in here, right? So our delta s in the delta g equation is the delta s of the system. I'll add the subscript to make that a little bit more clear, but this is the delta s of the system, right? So what we can do here is if we divide this, uh, if we divide both sides by t, right, in this equation, let's do delta g over t is equal to delta h over t minus delta s, right? So um, if you look at this, right, if we were to add a negative sign here, right, in fact, let's do that. So we both multiply both sides by negative one, basically. Then this guy is the exact same as the right-hand side of this equation, right? Note that these two are exactly equal. Uh, to make it even more apparent, right, we know that this is the delta s of the system, this is the delta h of the system, right? So these, the right-hand side of this guy is exactly the same. So what this does, this relates the Gibbs free energy to the total entropy, right? Keep in mind, when you're talking about the Gibbs free energy, it is defined in terms of the entropy of the system. But our spontaneity is defined in terms of the uh, entropy change, the total entropy change of the universe. So what we can do now, now that we have the same right-hand side here, we can set these guys equal. So let's do that. And I'll do that in a different color. So we're going to set these guys equal. Do that up here. Set equal. Right? So that means that the total entropy change is going to be equal to negative delta G over T. And now if we solve this guy for delta G, right, then what we end up with is just negative T delta S total. Right? So now let's look at this equation, right? We know that te the temperature is the absolute temperature. So that guy's going to always be positive. Now, for delta S total, what is the scenario? We have to ask ourselves, what is the scenario where this would be a spontaneous process? And the answer is when delta S is greater than zero. So what, under what condition is delta G going to be a spontaneous process? It's going to be when delta G is negative, right? If this guy is positive for a spontaneous change, and we have this negative out front, delta G is spontaneous when it is less than zero. So this is the spontaneity criteria for delta G. Right, that delta G must be less than zero for a process to be spontaneous. Now, like I said, the beauty of having this in our toolkit is that now we can solve, we can figure out whether something's spontaneous or not without having to evaluate what's going on in the surroundings. All we need to know is the delta G of our system and we can say whether something is a spontaneous process or not. Now, you can go through a similar exercise if instead of holding temperature and pressure constant, you hold temperature and volume constant. So this is at t constant temperature and pressure. If you hold temperature and volume constant, you can get a similar expression for the Hemholtz free energy, where the Hemholtz free energy is spontaneous if it is less than zero at constant temperature and volume. Now, you might be way more familiar with the Gibbs free energy than the Hemholtz free energy. And that's actually, there's a really good reason behind that. Uh, since most chemistry is usually done on a bench top, at constant atmospheric pressure. The Gibbs free energy is very useful to us as chemists because we're constantly doing reactions at constant pressure. And so if we you know, deal with it in an isothermal fashion, then we can always say whether a process is spontaneous or not. Hemholtz free energy, constant volume processes are less common in chemistry. Um, so you'll mostly see the Hemholtz free energy more in physics. 
But uh, the Gibbs free energy is extremely useful to us as chemists since it gives us something for definition of constant pressure processes.